guitar. I'm glad to be coming into your homes today and I'm proud to announce the launch of my new bass series Inside the Bass Solo. Today I'm going to be taking a look at some of the key elements that I use when I do my bass solos and how I go in to prepare for a solo. Some of the key factors that I use are uh, the minor key, especially my B minor and my D minor, I use that. As a launching pad and also, I usually take um, a simple pattern. And I compound it to make it um, a complex maneuver. So um, as we go into today's program, uh, keep in mind if you see something in the program that you like and you want to go back and see it again, please feel free to log on to cityscopepresents.com, the future of bass improvisation. So with all that said and done, let's see if we can go inside the bass solo. Um, today, I'm going to be working in um, B minor. And let's see if we can call out a few notes. I'm on a five string, but no, don't let that alarm you because you, if you have a four string or a six string, you can use these techniques sparingly and also use them to incorporate inside your sound, whether it be uh, funk, R&B, gospel, jazz, rock, blues, across the whole medium and across the whole spectrum. So what I usually like to do, right, today in, um, in B minor, I take um, on the second fret of the A string and I start to call out some notes. So let's see if we can call out a few notes. Let's see um, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. And then I proceed back down the neck in a block form. B, A, G, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, B. Now once I have my B, I usually like to um, couple it with my open A and when I make a cross pattern <coughs> excuse me as I make a cross pattern I would fret the A B A G F sharp open E, then D, C sharp, open B. So right away I have open B, low C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. Now in that pattern, I usually like to open it up and use it as a launching pad. And as I open it up, it takes me into uh, something I develop, which is used quite often now in bass and also uh, in improvisational skills and studies, is the quadrospectrum fingering, which, was, which I developed 
um, and it related to four fingers on four strings on four frets. But now, as we um, develop and we went ahead and we now playing four string, five string, six string, and so on, right? That method can be used all across the board. So when I have quadro spectrum fingering, fingering, that's four fingers on four frets. So if I have F sharp, G, G sharp, A, then B, C, C sharp, D, then E, F natural, F sharp, G, then A, B flat, B natural, C. That will give me four right across the board. Now, I also use that as a proliferation for my chop builders because I can take that, right, that sequence of fours, right, and keep in mind that my thumb is right behind uh, my middle finger here so I can get a nice, nice even flow. Right, get that nice stretch. And also the proliferation of the chop builders, I could use that as four and four. Right, four, then I proceed down. If I add the, um, the low B from E, nice and even. So on and so forth. And go right back into my B. So the reason why I wanted to do that because as I use my B scale on today's lesson and on today's program, it gives you an idea that once you have that sequence, once you have that sequence, you could start to motivate yourself to use it in all the keys. All right, so we call out B. Let's start again, right? Let's see if we could do a, a linear form, all right, on the A string, right? So I have B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, then B on the 14th fret of the A string. I'm going to use that a lot because this is going to be the interlocking factor when I couple it with my low B. This is like our home row. The 12th, the 12th fret is your home row because it's going to have the same notes as your open strings. And, and I always look at always look at that positioning as having two bases in one. So oh, I think of it as two bases in one. As I start to um, as I start to do my call and response, it'll link me right in to my mirror mode. So we started under um, A string, and I'm on B, right? So I have B, A, G, F sharp, E. Now, as I start to incorporate, I want to try to peg in 
as many bees as possible. So I have my open bee, right, on the, um, my, my uh, bee string. Then I have fretted bee on the second fret of the A string. Then I have um, my fretted B on the seventh on the seventh fret of the E string. Right, seven, eight, nine. Then I have my octave, the ninth fret of the D string. Right, then I have um, the fourth fret of my G string. And I try to link as many bees as possible. I try to link as many bees as possible. I try to link as many bees as possible and that will open up a lot of doors to get some tones. Now, from this B, right, this fretted B on the E, I usually couple that with my major six. So let's see if we can call it out. I'm on the 10th fret of the A string. So I would have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, my G major. And what I usually like to do, I usually like to proceed right down the neck, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G. Now you notice that B, which will be my major third of G, give me that tonality, almost that diatonic tonality. That diatonic tonality. So if I have that G, and it opens up a lot of characteristics if I'm in like a, a B minor mode. up a lot of characteristics. So we have B minor and we had G major. Now let's see if we can open up a few more doors, right? Right after we take this little Thank you. 
As we started off, and as we left off on the D and the B scale, B minor, we started to open up a lot of doors. And I want to continue on explaining how I do a lot of cross patterns. I usually take my pinky, right, and my theory and my analogy about the pinky is that the pinky, right, if I was to take my hand, right, like, and just take it off and turn it around, the pinky will have just as much strength as my uh, first uh, or my index finger. So you will see me, you will see me use a, a lot of pinky move maneuvers. I will use a lot of pinky maneuvers. And right across on that, on that beat, I usually take my pinky as a launching pad, right? And I'll make that cross maneuver. And I like to use a lot of um, launching, use my pinky as a launching pad to um, dig deep in to the core of my scale. And incorporate it right into the meat of my scale pattern. So let's see where, where we stand so far. So far we took our B minor, 